Welcome to C-Sharp Tutorial for Beginners. This is part 3 of C-Sharp Tutorial. In this programming course, C-Sharp basics are covered. Concepts are explained with appropriate examples. This video is about generics in C-Sharp. Generics is an important topic in C-Sharp programming. This is one of the best features of modern programming languages. It is also known as generic programming. In this video, we will see what is generic programming and how it is implemented in c -sharp. and what advantages it offers over non-generic programming. Generics are programs written in terms of types to be specified later. Types are provided as parameters at the time of instantiation. In some languages like Scala, Julia and Haskell, this concept is known as parametric polymorphism. In C++, this concept is called templates. In design pattern terms, this concept is known as parameterized types. It decouples the types from the code and makes it generic. This makes it possible to reuse code for types that you have not yet written. In C Sharp, classes, structs, interfaces, delegates, and methods can be written as generic. Note that the first four are types and methods are members. So what advantages it offers? Generics provide type safety without the overhead of multiple implementations of code. It eliminates the need for boxing, unboxing, or typecasting, which causes runtime errors. The code is much less as with regular classes. Many overloaded methods can be merged into one, and many classes can be merged into one. In short, the generic code is reusable and easier to maintain. Generics are best candidates for creating data structures or collection classes. c -sharp provides a set of non-generic collections in system.collections namespace. Whereas, generic collection classes are provided in system.collections.generic namespace. All of the non-generic collections retrieve and store values as objects. When storing values in these collections, these are converted to object and stored. Converting or casting a value to an object is called boxing. When retrieving back, these objects must be converted back to our specific type. This is called unboxing. The boxing and unboxing cause a great performance hit and also cause type safety problems. Let us see an example to explain this. Here in this program, a array list is used which is a non-generic collection. An instance variable LST of array list is created. Then an object of customer class is instantiated. Then customer object is added to the array list object using the add method. Here is an important thing to note. The add method implicitly converts it to object type and stores it. In other words, it is implicit boxing or type casting which causes performance overload. On the next line, the object is retrieved. Note that it is retrieved as object. In order to use this object, it must be converted back to customer object, which is done here. But if someone converts this object back to some other type by mistake, there will be no compile time error. Here, the object is casted to vendor instead of customer and it compiles successfully, but raises the error at runtime. We can eliminate the chance of making mistakes like this by using generic classes. Here, the last example is implemented using generic list class instead of non-generic array list class, and the boxing unboxing problem is avoided easily. Here, the list class is instantiated and customer is passed as parameter to the class. Please note, the name of customer is enclosed in less than greater than sign. It is also called angular brackets. Within the angular brackets, customer type is passed as parameter. This is how a type is passed as parameter to a generic class. 
and now look at the add method. It only accepts customer object as parameter. So cust object is passed and IntelliSense also works and there is no boxing or type casting involved. And here customer object is retrieved from the list and assigned to a customer variable. Please note no unboxing or type casting is needed. And casting customer object to a vendor object will always raise compile time error. So by using a generic list, we have avoided the problem of boxing and unboxing. It is also type safe. It is fast and there are no compile time errors. And the generic list class will work with any other classes which I create in future. In short words, reusability and less code. Let us see how a generic class is implemented. Here is how a generic class is declared. It is similar to other classes declarations. But after the class name, there is a pair of angular brackets and type parameters or placeholders are written in between them. And these are separated by commas. You can write any number of type parameters and then these type parameters are used throughout the class. They are available for variable declaration, method return type, and method parameter types. These placeholders are replaced with the actual types when the class is instantiated. You can name these type parameters in any way. It is your choice to name them. Here in this example, I have named them as type 1 and type 2. You can name them as T1 or T2. It is up to you. When instantiating the class, actual types are provided in angular brackets. We have already seen this when we instantiated the list class. Our next topic is constraints for type parameters. So far, we have learned that we can pass any type parameter to a generic class. It may work for simple assignment operations, but when we try to access its functionality, it does not work. And IntelliSense also does not work. It is because compiler needs some extra information about type parameters to work with them. By default, compiler treats the type parameter as system.object type. For example, here I am trying to make an instance of type T, but compiler raises the error. This is because compiler needs more information about the type parameters being passed. This additional information about type parameter is provided through constraints. There are about seven constraints which we can use. The constraints are written using where class after the declaration and before the body. For each type parameter, a separate where class is used. Here I have used new constraint for type parameter T. The new constraint means that the type has parameterless constructor. This tells the compiler that the instances of type can be made. Similarly, there is a class constraint. It informs the compiler that the type parameter is a class or reference type. Struct constraint tells that the type parameter is a struct or value type. And unmanaged means type is unmanaged. You can also write the names of interfaces implemented or the base class name. Please note that more than one constraint can be applied to a type parameter using comma as delimiter. But new constraint should always be the last constraint in the list. In summary, constraints provide additional information and restrictions about the type parameters which is used by the compiler to recognize and access functionality provided by the constraints and also restrict the types which do not meet the constraints requirements. Let us move to our next topic which is generic methods. Here in this example a generic method is written. Name of the method is generic method and type parameter and constraints are written similar to previous example. So there is no difference as far as the type parameter and its constraints are concerned. 
Also note, here I have written a generic method in non-generic class. So you can write generic methods anywhere in your code. When the method is invoked, type parameter string is passed in angular brackets. This is how we call a generic method. But the next call is interesting. Here, generic method is called without passing the type parameter. In this case, it simply infers the type from the argument passed to the method. In this case, it is a string and it makes it simple. Okay. This topic ends here. I hope you have found this topic interesting and you will make your life easier through generic programming. Please ask questions in the comment section and let me know your feedback. Please subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos on C Sharp. And also like and share this video with your friends. Happy coding!